Hello everyone and welcome back to another video where we have this cool MIT integral involving some ceilings. So before I go to Six Flags, let's do this real fast. The first thing I'm going to do actually is kind of think about what these ceiling um, functions actually do. Because on their interval, these functions are individually constant. And what I mean by that is that say we, we were to graph say ceiling of X or another way to write that would just be this. And what that would look like is basically this right here. It's step up, step, step, step in. Simu similarly, it would look like, not like that, but like this if you were to go in the negative x direction. So the whole point is that each of these is effectively constant on its given uh, like one unit interval. So one way we can actually evaluate this integral, or at least to begin to, is going to be to almost split split this integral up into little pieces. And what I mean by that is by saying, well, let the uh, ceiling of x, in this case, be constant on the sort of interval. Uh, so we can say that it's just going to be some k. So we have 1 over k minus x. And then we still have the ceiling here, but then raised to the negative k power. And then what we can do is just add each of these up. So we can say let k range from, well, 1 to infinity. And then our integral, we're going to also have to split up into little pieces. So since we're integrating from 0 to infinity, we can say this is from k minus 1 all the way up to k, and then dx, of course. So we're integrating this function now just over many intervals. And to actually evaluate this integral right here, it's actually not awful. What we can do is do a u sub, so let u equal 1 over k minus x. And this will simplify things quite a bit, actually. Uh, namely, what we get uh, is going to be, so we have du equals, well, 1 over k minus x squared dx. Uh, and this right here is just going to be, well, what is this right here? u squared. So our dx is actually just going to be equal to 1 over u squared du. And then let's see how this transforms our bounds. Whenever we plug k into this expression, we get 1 over 0. So what we, what we can say there is that our bounds for our integral are now from infinity as our top bound. But then the bottom bound, well, that's relatively simple. Uh, we plug in k minus 1 here, and we get k minus k plus 1, because you know we have two minus signs. So that's just a 1. And inside our ceiling function, we just have a u. That does not look like a u. A u. And then we have a minus k here, and then we still have a 1 over u squared du. So now what we can do is a similar thing. We can now evaluate this floor, sorry, the ceiling function right here by expressing it in, in terms of a sum now. We just kind of have to do it again. So we're going to end up with a double sum. So zooming in on this, what we find is that if we, we can now split this integral up again, so we're going to have two sums, one from k equals 1 to infinity, but then now, let's call it j, j from j equals, say, 2 to infinity. It's 2 because we need one more than our bottom bound right there. So what we have then is j to the minus k, and then 1 over u squared. And then we're going we're gonna to have our du, but what are our bounds going to be? Well, again, we're splitting up the ceiling into the ceiling... Um, this integral of our ceiling function into many different integrals and we're just adding all of them up. So our bounds for our, our integral are actually just going to be from j minus 1 to j. And this integral right here we can actually evaluate quite easily by virtue of this term right here is just a constant relative to u. So what we can do with the u, <laughs> I just wanted to say that, uh, what we can do is factor it out, right? So we have our sum from k equals 1 to infinity, but then we also have our sum from j equals 2 to infinity. We have 1 over j to the k. Then we have our integral from j minus 1 to j of 1 over u squared du. And this right here, we can just find the antiderivative for once, which is quite nice. And this right here gives us negative 1 over u just in general. So what that's going to evaluate to is just going to be 1 over j minus 1 minus 1 over j. And then times, of course, are 1 over j to the k. And then our sum from j equals 2 to infinity 
and then our sum from k equals 1 to infinity. And now all we have to do is evaluate this kind of nasty, not really, um, double sum. And the first thing we're going to do to do that is just take this bit right here and do partial fractions, but like backwards. We're basically going to smush it together. So what we're going to do is multiply the top, top and bottom of this by j. So let me just write that in. We're going to multiply this by j. So we're going to have a j up top. And then we're going to do a similar thing. I'll remove the parentheses there and extend the fraction bar. We're going to do a similar thing here. Multiply the top and bottom by j minus 1. Just get a common denominator. And then that looks really cool with the colors. I like that. I don't know why I haven't done this combo before. Anyway, uh, but you'll see we have a common denominator now. So our numerator is just going to be, well, j, but then minus j minus 1. But that minus 1 is going to become a plus 1. So it's really a, these cancel, a 1 over j, j minus 1. And what this gives us then, if I can zoom out, is the following. We have still our double sum you know, from k equals 1 to infinity. Now I really understand the Einstein summation notation. My gosh, it's a pain to write all these notations, all these sigmas so much. Uh, not very sigma, as they say. I can't stand that slang. Oh my gosh. Anyway, uh, what we have then is a 1 over j, j minus 1. So to evaluate one of these sums, namely the one involving the k, we can just evaluate that term right there using our formula for our geometric series. And that is because we know that one over j, j is always going to be two or more, meaning that its reciprocal is always going to be less than one, meaning we can apply our formula for our geometric series. And what this gives us then, uh, evaluating this right here, so writing it more explicitly, we're evaluating this sum right here. So not j, k, from k equals one to infinity of one over j all to the k. What's, what this right here is equal to is just 1 over j, our first term in the sequence. I'll erase this to prevent confusion. And then over 1 minus 1 over j. And multiplying the top and bottom by j, we find that this is just j, or pardon me, 1, <laughs> 1 over j minus 1. So now that we have that, our sum is reduced, our double sum is reduced to a single sum. And we have, I'll kind of zoom in here. We have our sum from j equals 2 to infinity of, well, 1 over j minus 1 squared times j. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to actually uh, change, change things up just slightly and say that j is going to start from, well, j equals 1. So that way our squared term right here is just going to be j squared. And our, this, in this term right here is, can be just can just be j plus 1. And the way we're going to evaluate this is going to be partial fraction decomposition. So we can say that we have a, some a j plus b over j squared plus some c over j plus 1 is equal to, well, all of this right here. And multiplying, uh, cross multiplying everything by that, we have, well, a j plus b times j plus 1 plus cj squared is now equal to 1. So now all we have to do is evaluate these coefficients, uh, evaluate this expression for a, b, and c. So if we plug in j equals minus 1, this whole term right here just goes away. So what we're left with is negative 1 squared times c, which is just going to be c. So we have c, I'll write this off to the side, c equals 1. So we, we know that c equals 1 now. Okay, let's do another one. Say let j equal 0, right? Well, if we let j equal 0, that c term just goes away. And this term right here is just going to be, well, 1. And our a is also just vanishes. So what we're left with is quite literally just a b. So b also is going to be equal to 1 b is 1. And what this leaves us with now is our a. What is our a equal to? And to evaluate this, we can, since we already know b and c, we can just plug in j equals 1 and see where that gets us. So we now have a plus b times 2 plus c is now equal to 1. 
but what is C? C right here is just one, so we can just cancel both of these terms. Uh, so now all of this is just equal to zero. Equals zero. Uh, meaning that we can also just drop the two as well. And what this gives us is a plus b equals zero, meaning that a must be equal to negative b, which is just going to be negative one. So combining all of this, what we actually find is that, scrolling on up to how we originally defined things, we, we now know that our sum we can express, so our sum from j equals one to infinity, can now be expressed actually as negative j plus one over j squared, and then plus one over j plus one. But you'll see that we can actually simplify this quite a bit uh, by splitting up this fraction right here. So what we have is our sum from j equals one to infinity of one over j squared. That one we can evaluate. But we also have our minus one over j and then plus one over j plus one. This right here isn't necessarily an issue to evaluate. That's just going to be our pi squared over six. So I'll just write that now, actually. This right here is just pi squared over six, Euler's uh, famous formula for that. But then we have this right here. So we have plus our sum from j equals one to infinity of one over j plus one, and then minus one over j. And one way we can actually just evaluate this straight off the bat, is going to be uh, to actually re-index this term right here. So we can split this up into two sums. We can say this is a sum from j equals one to infinity of one over j plus one, and then minus the sum from j equals two to infinity of one over j, or pardon me, we need to re-index the other one, whoopsies. Sorry, uh, this right here, sorry, j equals two, and then we drop the plus one, I do apologize. And then we're going to have our minus our sum from j equals one to infinity of one over j. And to get these on uh, what you might call the same footing, we can just split this sum up as follows. We know that our first term plugging in one is just going to be one. And we say, we can express this whole sum now as one plus uh, the sum from j equals uh, one to infinity, or pardon me, j equals two to infinity of one over j. And because of that, we just, you know, chop off the first term and like have the rest of the sum. We see that these two are actually going to cancel because we are subtracting them and being that we're going to have an extra minus one. So our final solution then is pi squared over six. And then this term right here, which is a minus because we have our minus up there, minus one. And that is our final answer, pi squared over six minus one. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I am off to six flags now, though I will probably be editing this uh, tonight after I get back. Uh, but at any rate, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching. And then times one. You can't believe what happened. I got a volleyball. And if I go get dressed right now, I get I can get another candy.